All right, and welcome to the Lawn Yob Show. I'm your host, John, my co-host, Kelly. What's up, dude? Not much. It is a uh, show. This is this is a show that is a show we've been doing for a long time, and we're just kind of rebranding on and off again. I've been podcasting since 2005, Kelly. Isn't that a... It's That's a long time. A long time. Now, granted, it's been on and off again. We've had several varieties of this show, and this is just another incarnation of it. Now, we had a lot of bumps along the way. We didn't make it like some of the other podcasters that are absolutely huge now, but we started 2005. People didn't even know what podcasts were back then. Nope. Not at all. And But I was doing it. I didn't even know what podcasts were back then. The first few times. See, I started in radio uh, professionally in 2002. And by when about 2000. Hair. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> when you had some ain't, hair. Ain't that the truth? Yes, indeed. I, defi- I had a full head of hair, and I would spike it up. I was a punk rocker back in the day, so I had all kind of different colors as well, and I, I look, I got the use out of my hair while I still had it. Let's put it that way. Anyway, so I, by about 2005, I'd been in radio for about three years, and I wanted to take it to the Internet. And I would go on MySpace when MySpace was still a thing, and I would record, and I would just put them. You had MySpace music, and you could, like, upload songs. Well, I was uploading talk shows with me and my friends. Kelly, by the way, who is my co-host, he's been a, a mainstay of my podcast. Uh, probably the most frequent guest out of all, uh, to be honest. And we've been doing this thing for a long time. So I would, I would upload it on MySpace when podcasting wasn't even really a thing yet. But that's how we started. And a lot of bumps. Look, it, you know, I was in college, working a full-time job, over full-time hours, making overtime, and... You try to schedule things. It's hard to get guests, number one. Uh, it wasn't professional. I didn't have somebody scheduling people for me. It happens to where it's just totally inconsistent. They start. They do good. They fail. You move on. You, you try different things. And three and a half years ago, while we were still doing – by the way, I had my own online radio station for a little while. Well, I was playing music. That was really nice. Yeah, with I me and my that. friends. And we'll probably do it again. I do have uh, hopes in, in the future of doing it again. And the music will be played uh, by me and my friends and, and some other acquaintances in Canada, believe it or not. By the way, witchpolice.com, you can go ahead and check them out. Uh, my buddy Sam there does a lot of amazing things. His podcast has really taken off the last few years. But it, about three and a half years ago, I had a son. And that's what really really brought things to a halt while I was on and off again when you have a baby and and Kelly can attest to this because we both had our our kids right around the same time um it totally changes things and granted this is Father's Day weekend when we're recording this episode one of the Lon Yop show it changes everything Totally changes everything, and so I hadn't, I, I wasn't able to podcast, and that really brought a halt to everything. And then, when I my first son started to go to daycare, we had another one. So <laughs> the last three and a half years, I've kind of been MIA. So we're this is a podcast that has been around in very different, a whole lot of different types. So we're just rebranding this. And we're coming back from a hiatus, but we're also starting something new. And I think now I've grown to a place where I'm in a good spot. My kids are going to get taken care of where we can actually make this a somewhat normal thing. I'm not going to tell you we're going to do this every week because that would just be insane. But we'll post way more often. We'll do way more shows. And again, Father's Day weekend, Kelly can attest to what it's like to be a father and how much kids change things, right? Yes, sir. Twin, uh, twin girls. That's what I take care of every day. Unbelievable. I had one three and a half years ago. I had one that came in January. Kelly had twins a month before. <laughs> now, granted, the twins, they were a little bit premature, but, dude, you would never tell it nowadays. These girls are all over the place, boy, full of life, full of energy. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. 
That's the best job you could have is being called dad, you know? It, it's true, true. You know, all the... It gets rough, but it's good. It's, it's worth it's, it. It's, it's a lot of hectic stuff. It wears you out. You lose a lot of sleep. You lose get a lot of energy. They don't stay small, you know? And you got to take advantage. Boy, they get older quick, too. Life will change fast. You know, but... From all one extreme the, to the other. <laughs> absolutely. And all the cheesy things that you that you hear and that you see about about people saying being a parent being a dad you read all of these cheesy lines right yeah they're all 100 percent true right as cheesy as they are they're all 100 percent true yeah love my kids they're so much fun they i, I have no hair i would say they make me pull <laughs> my hair out but i have none <laughs> they, you know they i have one actually that that pulls the little bit of hair on my face, the beard, while <laughs> while I'm trying to put him to sleep, he likes to play in hair. I don't have any, so he pulls the little bits of hair out of my face, which would be my my beard. That's uh, Luke, the youngest one. But um, it, kids change everything. So they put a halt to the podcasting thing for a while, and I think now I'm in a comfortable spot. Uh my work life, by the way, for those of us, that, for those that are just listening, as I adjust the mic and it might be a little bit louder now, for those that are just listening, that may not know us that well, I've been working professionally in radio since uh, 2002, and this is just a hobby. I like, I, I love radio, love broadcasting, and I love podcasting, so I'm doing it, but it's <laughs> podcasting's a different animal but i've been doing this for a long time and i don't know where i was going with that to be honest <laughs> uh but I, i'm not going to tell you what radio station to work at professionally i, I just don't think that's a, an appropriate thing to do i like to keep them both separate because as you'll see as you'll be a fan of this podcast and the more shows you listen to I'm going to speak my mind, and I'm going to say what I believe, and I'm going to tell it like it is, and sometimes I don't want that following me in a professional career. So I'm just going to tell you my name is John, and that's as far as we're going to go. Uh, Kelly, we're not going to say where he works at either, but we will tell you what he does professionally, and Kelly's kind of making a little uh, a move. But Kelly, how long have you worked, uh, where you are, and what do you do professionally? Ten years in a shop. Uh I've been working as a technician on vehicles for uh, 10 years, five years as the manager, currently the manager. But I got to a point in my life where uh, I can take a pay cut. I hate being a manager. I hate working in the heat now. And I got kids to take care of. I'm working till 7 every night. I found a position where I'm going to be off for 1 o'clock every day. I won't have to be a manager. Just take a little pay cut, and I'm happy with that. Less stress. Less, way less stress. You know, a manager isn't cut out for everybody. I mean, it's. It, I can understand that want, move. And you're going to get off at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Six hours earlier every day. Unbelievable. You can get home, shower, relax, cook a little sauce, and then the wife and the kid. you get the wife and the kids in the afternoon. You're already set up, ready to go. You can enjoy more time with your kids. You were getting off at 7, 8 o'clock. In the after, you know, in yep. the evenings, you don't when, get much time to spend with your kids. No, and when I, when they when they in school starting in August, I could get off, take a shower, take a two hour nap. Yeah, be up when they get off the school bus, and I got all the rest of the day to enjoy my kids. Now you you worked in an automotive shop, and you, you still are for the next what week or two. Week. Um, y'all changed some oil. I, I just wanted to ask this. Okay. How many times since you've been a manager has somebody that worked underneath you changing oil in a vehicle mm -hmm. forgot to put the plug back and poured oil in and spilt oil everywhere? Has it? How often has that happened? I'd say five times or less. Five times or and and in, in a how ten, many years? In a ten year span. So not bad, not bad. But that's like they probably didn't mess nothing up. They just I had a guy recently, uh, a technician. I'm working up on a lift doing an oil change. He's on the other lift doing an oil change, and he's like, man, this van, I don't know what's wrong. I put five quarts of oil in it. It's still not even touching the it's dipstick. <laughs> I'm looking. I looked at him. I said, dude. You I better said, go check that plug. I said, dude, five quarts. This should be full. Yeah. And uh, 
I, I looked at him. I said, well, put a little bit more oil and see where you at. He, he added a little bit more. Still not touching the dipstick. I looked at him. I said, you sure you put that uh that drain plug back or that oil filter? Oh, he went back oh. underneath. I forgot to put the drain plug back. <laughs> oil I said, oh. everywhere. No, everywhere. it goes in a pan it goes that in a we pan. have. But uh, y'all put that back. Y'all, but it was y'all wasted all. Yeah, all it was wasted all. Good it. all that's just got to be recycled now. Unbelievable. <laughs> but and that's I, the number one most common mistake when changing oil is not putting the drain plug back in. Or you, like the other day, I thought my oil filter was on good. I cranked it. I I started hearing some sound. I cut it off right away. For some reason, that new oil filter must have been defective or something. Hmm. It was letting all shoot out of it. Cool. I heard up, killed it, went, cleaned up the mess, put a new one on, cranked it up, no problems. You just got to be uh, attention to detail and keep checking over your own work. Yeah. You could do this job for 10, 20 years. If you slip up one time, you can mess something up. So, I've, I've, uh, I know someone, no names, no brands. Worked not far from y'all, just down the road. <laughs> who <laughs> they were? They were doing some work, and they put some. They were doing. I don't. I think they took like the whole axle off a truck or something. Uh huh. Somebody went and put the the bolts back in, but they didn't do it all the way. Oh. Somebody was to go behind them and tighten it, and they never did. Ooh. They the the miscommunication. And so the bolts were in there, and they were halfway screwed, but they weren't tight. Person went down the interstate in that truck. The oh axle my. just came totally off. Oh, my God. Lost Let me tell you, they were in some trouble. What? Unbelievable. <laughs> Good enough to kill somebody. Yeah, yeah. Thankfully, they weren't, you know. But it was on the interstate, so it was super dangerous, but no injuries. Uh, but, yeah, that was... <laughs> A big, big problem. Uh, by the way, we're doing this Father's Day weekend. Kelly brought his two girls over, his wife's work. And so my wife, we got to give her credit. She's watching all four kids right now, <laughs> my two and Kelly's two. And it, that can be a job. Look, they're all under, what, four years of age. Yeah. They're, all, they're all toddlers. And so any of you who have kids back home, you know what that's like. So. I just want to say thank you to my wife. Uh, I got my my office, my studio, back in shape here in the new house. Not that we were talking about why I kind of slowed down on podcasting. Not only uh, did I start having kids, but we moved and I had to rebuild another studio. And uh, look, you move into a new house, and it's a, it's a small house, and we had stuff stockpiled. We just kind of junked things everywhere. And in this studio, uh, it, it, it took us a while, but... Recently, I, I got it set up, man. I, I'm a obviously this is coming from South Louisiana. I'm a big Saints fan. I got my Saints fan memorabilia up there. I got a little bit of wrestling memorabilia. A big a wrestling fan. Me and Kelly both growing up, and uh, music as well. I play music, so I got it set up in here. I'm excited about it. It's we crazy. Got room. It's crazy. Uh, me too. I bought a brand new house and uh, roughly a year ago, and uh, brand new mobile home. And it's funny how it takes so long to live in something to fully feel like you've done with it, you know? Yeah. You move stuff around, and um, when you move in, you throw boxes here and there. And mm -hmm. to finally have it all placed, and you think you have it all set up, then you buy more furniture. And it's just a constant change. Like, And I've put a lot of work into this house. We, we moved in 2014, and, and my wife is like, oh, it's a small She's She's already looking for the future mm -hmm. to move into the next big house, our, our dream house, the one that we're really going to settle into. Because uh, I plan, you know, 65 years old, you're supposed to retire. In my profession, that ain't going to happen. Uh, I'll be much older, but you know, you you do a thirty year mortgage, ah, da da da. Eventually, you know, we move out soon. Is is the idea? But I built a fence, just home repairs, the money I put into plumbing. You know how many shelves I put up in this house? I just put up one this morning here in in this studio. Um, to Things to change. put up, you know, you put so much blood, sweat, and tears into the house that you move into. It's like, why did I put that shelf up right here? Did I put that shelf up for me? 
or the next person that's going to move in this house next year when we move into a new house. No, I'm staying in this house longer. Every time I do a new project, that's like another six months I'm staying in my house. You know what I mean? <laughs> because I, I put so much effort into it, so much money into it. I'm not putting, I didn't put that shelf up for somebody to come by this house and they have a shelf in this room, did I? <laughs> no, I put that up for me. So I'm going to get my enjoyment. I'm going to get my pleasure out of it now. That's yeah. just how I, how I feel. You just you're gonna need more room. I hate to tell you that. Oh, I know. And I, I look if, if it was want. just me and Trish, this house would be wonderful. But it's me, Trish, and Cause two you're kids. Have, you're gonna have to give up this studio uh, to one of your kids, and you won't. Hurts. You won't have a that studio hurts. now. Look, by the time they're of age, that I do need to give up this room. We'll, Which is we'll, not as we'll far move in, off as you think. We'll move into a new house. No, it's gonna come quick. That's one thing I can say um, about having kids. It's a uh, constant change. You got to keep adapting. Yeah. And uh, you can't slow their growth. And uh, they're going to want more room to their self. One thing I can say about since I've had kids, it slows things down. A lot of people say things go by fast. And, yes, I do feel like my kids have grown up fast. I do. But at the same time, I spend way more hours awake now. And, and not, not only awake, but doing stuff while awake it's one thing where you're just mindlessly watching tv being awake those hours pass by quickly when you're entertained when you're watching after kids which i do during the day i'm not going to tell you about my crazy work schedule because who cares and that's about to change in a month or two anyways but i feel like my life has really slowed down when i was in my 20s my life was like 150 miles per hour nowadays i've got so much stuff going on a day lasts forever and there's one of there's one of Kelly's kids. She just opened the door, checking in on us. It's, <laughs> hey, it's a, you know, yeah. Father's Day weekend. We're gonna have these things. That's kind of the theme, anyways. Um, but uh, you have those things where, uh, to me, it just slowed down my life a lot. I'm living a whole lot more now. I feel like I got a lot more uh, in my life going on just because I, I, I'm so busy. Uh, every, I, I feel every second of the day, I notice every second as the day goes by. So my life has really slowed down. I'm getting a lot out of it, which that's how I'm super I'm happy soon. about. I, I'm super happy about that. Cause you don't want your life to be over in the blink of an eye. You want to feel like you've lived as long as possible. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a soon be in your situation really. Cause I'll be up for four in the morning, uh, three in the morning, work till one. And then I'll be up most of the day, the rest of the day, you know, instead of be at work all day long. It's early to rise, but, I mean, you get so much benefit on the tail end of the day. You yeah, really when do. I get off at 7 at night, by the time I take a bat and that, it's almost 10 o'clock. I mean, the 7 to 10 flies by so fast. My kid's already in bed, mm -hmm. you know. I'm going to get to see more and do more. That's unbelievable, though. I got I to gotta pull this out. Your kids are in bed at what time? 10 o'clock. Incredible. Well, uh, I can convince Nate to go to sleep at 9.30. Sometimes they, like tonight, no nap, 9 o'clock, they're yeah. going to be in bed. Well, I can, I can convince Nate at 9.30. Luke, 11.30 to midnight, dude. <laughs> and this, this cat, I mean, none of my kids like to sleep ever. They don't like to sleep. And But how long, when do your kids wake up? 8.30 in the morning about. My kids, my kids will go to sleep ten o'clock at night. Wake up at six, dude. <laughs> but you <laughs> just said, ready to go. They don't up, sleep. But y'all set up different than us too. We have they have their each own room. Yeah, and we put them in their bed and they, they fall asleep. I mean, close the door, turn off the light. My kids like to sleep. I, me and Nate share a bed. He will not go to sleep if you don't have somebody with him. And Trish and Luke share a bed. Now she'll put him in the pack and play. He wakes up in the middle of the night and she puts him in the bed with him. But they don't sleep through the night. They've got to have somebody with them. You have to break like, that. Yeah, well, it's it's that, a struggle. These kids, kids do not like to sleep, dude. My, my kids <laughs> been bro. They never even had that stage because we started them off right away. You sleeping by yourself, you know. Now it's just to to break them out of that. You know, they might cry, they might holler, but they are right. They not hurt. They not let them cry themselves to sleep. But. The way your house is set up too right now, with, <laughs> you only and, got one extra room, really, with right. a bed in it. You have right. your podcast stuff in the other room, so it's kind of hard to do that too. Uh, and then you really need and then people have to understand. 
I work the overnight. I work the overnight shift and the afternoon shift, which is crazy. I mean, it it it, it it's tough. I since high school, three hours a day of sleep, and I was good. I mean, I, but I've done that for over fifteen years. You got to understand, I was doing that in high school. When we all it didn't sleeping, take me. Yeah, while everybody's sleeping, I'm up. I'm a night owl, and I, I I've always been like that. But my schedule's about to change. I think coming August, no more overnight. I'm going to have a normal uh, Monday through Friday, normal work day. Oh, everybody's working. Hours. You working? Yeah, and, and then I can when go everybody's to sleep. When everybody's off, sleeping, you off. Which will be unbelievable. I cannot wait to live a normal life. But, I mean, I've done it for so long. You I've been the night so owl for so long. Since high school. Even, I mean, I didn't even work. But in high school, I was still doing those hours where I was up all night playing on the computer, doing whatever. Because I just, you know, I had anxiety. I didn't sleep at night. And it, it just carried over into college of partying and everything else. I, I was a big internet nerd. And I just loved staying up in the overnight. And, and I... Just develop it in my career. I would just work overnight shifts. That's the time I was up anyway, so it didn't matter. But three hours of sleep a day eventually catches up to you. I'm 32 going on 33. I remember all that. Oof. Oof. Buddy, when I tell you I'm worn out now and I can't do it anymore, I can't do it anymore. I can't. It wears on you. And I look older now. You have, I know. I know. I know. Gravity is is catching up to me. You have nothing else to prove. You didn't prove it for twelve years working overnight. There's yeah. Nothing, there's nothing else to prove. We already know you can handle it. There's nothing. And and hats off to the company I work for. Private company, by the way, radio company, which is hard to hard to find. Everything's all corporate now. Um, they've really taken care of me. Hats off, and and they're gonna allow me to move to these new hours, and I love them for it. And I'm I'm glad I put in you know what I put in for I I, I put in my time, but oh man, <laughs> you know you want not to act it, it, having it, a regular I know, schedule. I know a regular schedule where I'm off on the weekends. And now, granted, I'm off on the weekends now, but overnight screws everything up because your sleeping is all screwed up. So even when okay, look, it's. Well, it's Friday night, John. You can sleep tonight because you're it's sat, tomorrow Saturday. You're off Saturday. You can sleep tonight. Well, guess what? I still wake up like at two a.m. because my body's not trained to sleep for a full eight nine hours. My body wakes up after about two or three hours of sleep because it's just trained that way. But yeah. that's soon to be a thing of the past. One of the best things about it is when we go to Saints games. You don't oh. have to go to work that night. We started avoiding. We get, we get back home for eight o'clock. Yeah, eight thirty. Now we live. And then in, he has to go to work for twelve o'clock at night. We live in the middle of Louisiana. By the way, we're Saints season ticket holders. Uh, New Orleans is about a, from where I live, a two and a half, two hour, forty five minute drive. Uh, from where Kelly lives, it's a, a good three, three hours, half, three yeah. and a half hour drive. So you got to get up early. The prime time stuff and a lot of the late afternoon games we would miss. Uh, we couldn't make it, and, and then I'd have to go in in the overnight, and it was just rough. Well, with the new schedule, we might be making more Saints games. But <laughs> while I just want to tell people, um, those of you Louisianians that might be listening to this podcast, Saints season ticket holder since 2005. Check the date, 2005. We were still under Jim Hazlitt at the time. This was the last uh, year with Jim Haslett. That was the year where we bought, well, finally, me and my dad had gone to, we'd go once a year to Saints games, sometimes twice a year with the family. It was a, it was a big thing. Um, and then we decided we'd put our money together. I started working by then. I was in, uh, in college, 2005, and I, I was making money. We we're going to get season tickets. So we get season tickets, 2005 season, we go to, I think, one preseason game. Then here comes Hurricane Katrina oh. and destroys New Orleans. Our season tickets, uh, we've got season tickets, and we can't even go to the games anymore. You know, wow. they were splitting the season with San Antonio. But they did have two games in Tiger Stadium at LSU. Worst experience in my life sports-wise. Sports-wise going to games. Tiger Stadium was dog shit it was terrible they treated us like shit it was all about lsu oh you're a saints fan you might as well be an alabama fan they fucking hated us they if you ever been to tiger stadium they have elevators 
we wouldn't we weren't even filling up a quarter of Tiger Stadium, so they didn't even want the elevators to work. We had to walk like it was just miserable traffic. They didn't bring it. Oh, it's you know it's just a Saints game. It's not an LSU game, so we're not even going to bring the traffic cops out. <laughs> so traffic was fucking miserable in Baton Rouge as it always is. But then you got a Saints game going on. They didn't even bring the traffic. They didn't even do traffic preparations. It was awful, awful. So but mean- we stuck it through. We made we made every game. In Tiger Stadium that year. Well, the Saints organization, as great as they are, they refunded us for all the games that we missed. Wow. We put that towards next season, season tickets, which was 2006, when we got Sean Payton, when we got Reggie Bush, when we got Drew Drew Brees. And next thing you know, the Saints are in the NFC Championship game. We, we We lose to the Bears at Chicago. But then all of a sudden... Everybody starts buying Wait, season tickets now because we got then? a winner. Rex Grossman? No, no, no. Well, yeah, 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 for the Bears. Yeah, Rex Grossman. The Bears. Gross, man. <laughs> How did we lose that game? Because <laughs> it was outside and it was raining and we were a dome team. And we were so good, but we weren't there yet. Yeah. We weren't there yet. We had to turn the corner. We were three quarters of the way there. We just needed to turn the corner. We were so good, dude. We were so good that season. Fucking Reggie Bush and Deuce McAllister. <laughs> Talk about thunder and on, lightning. I need to go back on YouTube and watch uh, games. Unbelievable. Game. Unbelievable. And then, uh, so yeah, we've been season ticket holders since. And Kelly, um, I said, what, about three years ago now? It was me, my dad, and my wife. Well, then my wife got pregnant three and a half years ago. And she wasn't going to be able to make the games. And then Kelly Kelly ponied up now, yeah. Kelly ponied up and he bought that and him and my wife split the seasons now they 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 split yeah. that third seat and uh Kelly comes in but Kelly's been making games before that too when my wife couldn't make them so Kelly's a full on season ticket holder too since 2009 I've been uh, scrapping tickets whenever uh somebody kid It's know. unbelievable Kelly was uh he would go to Saints games cuz he wanted to watch NFL but Kelly really became and it's it's <laughs> it's uncanny how this happened. <laughs> Kelly became a true Saints fan the Super Bowl year. Before the but season even before started. Before the in season the off season. started, exactly. He was not a bandwagon and I, and fan. And I never would really watch a Saints game. I grew up on the Patriots. Before the yeah. 2009 season started, before the Super Bowl season started, me and Kelly were, I, I remember it to this me day, <laughs> we were walking through the Acadiana Mall, Lafayette, Louisiana, and Ke- we were walking down, and we were looking yeah, at jerseys and stuff, and <laughs> Kelly was like, I'm going to be a Saints fan. He's like, I finally understand what you've been telling me all these years. you got to root for the home team. you got to find a team it all that started. you love. It's, you got to be that home team. I'm going to be a Saints fan. I'm going to be a Saints fan. And now, granted, the Saints went to the NFC Championship game, 2006, and with Sean Payton, pay and then they never that, made the playoffs right. after that. They had never made the playoffs. They were close, but they never made the playoffs after that. And that year, before the season began, Kelly was like, I'm on board. I'm a Saints fan now. I'm going to root for the Black. And when I say Kelly jumped on board, folks, <laughs> he became obsessed. Kelly became... It, all started, it started sitting down at my computer. I, I would never watch the Saints, mm-hmm. ever. I turned on and started watching a couple uh, hype videos for the Saints, and I caught the chills watching it. And ever since then, I was a full blown Saints fan, and uh, I couldn't, I can't root for anybody else. I'm sorry, but it's I unbelievable. Kelly jumped on board, and that was they the said, most oh, magical season. Y'all said, "Man, we must be winning the Super Bowl this year if you're going to jump." If on Kelly's going to jump on board, yeah, we. I mean, we were saying it before the season yeah, even started. It, man, he must, we must be going to the Super Bowl. It snowed. It the, snowed in South Louisiana that year. It, it, it was unbelievable how things happen. I mean, I, there's so many things we can talk about that season. We were three and zero going into Monday Night Football. We were playing the Giants, and people flew down from Chicago. They were like, they were. I have the picture somewhere. Uh, they had a thing. They were like, we flew all the way down from Chicago to watch the Saints go four and zero against the Giants. They weren't like they were just became Saints fans for. So I have no idea why they were there. And I was, and they were from Chicago. And I was talking to the guy, and I was like, the, at the time, the statistics, the Saints weren't just beating people that season. They were blowing them out the water. And I was, it, it, Kelly's he's showing me the goosebumps on his arms. <laughs> 
Nobody had beaten other teams that severely since the 85 Bears. They were blowing everybody out. And I, I made that statement, and the guy's from Chicago, and he was like, I can't believe you're bringing the 85 Bears up. And I was like, yeah, dude, I looked at the statistics. Nobody has blown other teams out that much since the 85 Bears. And obviously he's from Chicago. He loves the 85 <laughs> Bears. Uh, one of the most amazing football teams to ever take the field, Monsters of the Midway. So, you know, it's, it, it was just such a magical, magical season. And since then, everybody jumped on the bandwagon. I remember, I remember going to school on the tennis courts in high school. We had a tennis court in our high school, and even when we were there, ten, a ten, we had a tennis team. But since we started going to high school there, tennis was the tennis team was over for about ten years, and it just turned into basketball courts, and the uh, their courts went into disrepair, really. But I remember going on the tennis courts early morning recess before school really got started and football season was starting. Who's going to win the Super Bowl? Everybody was talking. I'd be like, the Saints. The Saints are going to win it. Me and Brandon Aguilar, the Saints every year. The Saints. The Saints got it. They got it this year. And everybody would laugh at us and make fun of us. (laughs) And it finally happened when the Saints won the Super Bowl that night. It was unbelievable. I mean, there's so many different stories I can get into. We were jumping up and down at your dad's trailer. Yeah. Uh, Look – there was we were thinking about even going to Florida, buying tickets and going to Florida to watch the Saints in the Super Bowl. But I but you know what it was? Number one, the price. The price was one thing. Number two, I said, Nope. All my life, since I've been a Saints fan, I've been sitting on the fucking living room floor watching this shit with my dad and my, my parent who's who's passed and my grandfather who's who's passed. Mm-hmm. Um we watched it at the house. I want to watch the Super Bowl sitting on the fucking living room floor <laughs> at my dad's house, just watching on TV. Fuck the state. I don't want to be there. I want to do it traditionally old school. I, I, that was the best. Op- when the Saints won, I grabbed my phone and I called Brandon. Dude, we did it. <laughs> All those years when they laughed at us on the fucking tennis courts, we finally fucking won one. And it was worth it. It was worth it. All of those seasons... It was worth it. All Most on, amazing season. All on one Tracy Porter interception. That cat. What Unbelievable. He pointed the crowd. I got you, Pete. Man. I got you. Unbelievable. I got you. And he's seen it all the way before the snap. If you watch if you watch the sound effects version, they were calling it all the way. They were calling it all the way. He knew they had watched that play in practice over and over they knew again. His the little short curl oh, yeah. to, uh, I want to call him, uh, Har- is it Harrison? Uh, Peyton Manning, Trevor, Har- uh, Marvin Harrison. Marvin Harrison. I don't remember who it the little, was. The little, short, the little short curl. Yeah, that's what it yeah. was. It was, a, it was a little short curl to Harrison. And Tracy Porter had seen it over and over again. Over and over. It was that two was, weeks to prepare for the Super Bowl. He probably watched it like 50 times. That was the dagger. He read it all uh, the way. You could feel like the whole state just like, oh, Unbelievable. my God. Just, Unbelievable. We just won the Super Bowl. Oh. And, and, and since then, folks. You know, you know what was awesome is before that, game i was reading comments on uh on the super bowl on facebook and other things and people from all over the world was jumping on the saints bandwagon yeah. saying the other we, we want y'all to take out peyton man and we tired the of hearing about peyton man people from all across the world was it we in sweden rooting for the saints we in romania we rooting for the saints man and we done it everybody you know the whole world was going crazy the Saints became America's team. Fuck the Cowboys. The Saints became America's Hell team that yeah. season. And then Roger Goodell, uh, the whole Vikings thing. Look, we're not going to get it. We'll have another podcast where, we, where we're we going to delve deeper into that because we can go a long way. But uh, the, you know, the whole Bounty Gate shit, which was – it was posturing in the media, the head concussion thing. And then Roger Goodell married into a Vikings family. So that was part of it as well. And and it, it, it was a campaign. It was a political campaign is what it was. And the Saints, whatever, we got through it. They fucked us up. You know, 2012, and, and anybody that's a true Saints fan will tell you this. 2012, not the year after we won the Super Bowl, but the next year, was better than the Super Bowl team. We should have won the Super Bowl again in 2012, but Roger Goodell fucked us with Bounty Gate. But that team was fucking great. 
that team was amazing. And anybody that that really truly is a Saints fan will tell you that was the best Saints team ever, and they didn't even win the Super Bowl. But that's what happens when Joe Vitt is your head coach. <laughs> Unbelievable. The, 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 and we'll get into the we, we will get into Bounty Gate stuff. Uh, all you folks listening in, as passionate as we are in Saints fan, and look, we're in the off season. But when we get in football season, we do these podcasts. We're going to be talking a lot of Saints. We're from South Louisiana. We're season ticket holders. That's just what's going to happen. Oh yeah, absolutely. But uh, and w- the Bounty Gate stuff will always come up. And it's not, how is Roger Goodell still commissioner? By the way. Hmm. So How much, is he still commissioner? So much crazy things went on since he's been commissioner. I mean, countless things. I was listening to a, a podcast we did over three years ago, of course. This was the Ray Rice incident. You remember the Ray Rice incident where yeah. he and his wife, they were at a casino. They were drunk. She was uh, pushing him around, doing some shit. They got in an elevator, and he punched her lights out, and then oh, he yeah. drug her around. It was a very ugly incident, and the NFL was like, ah, oh, we didn't see the video. Then they, they, It was very very controversial with the suspensions, and they claimed they didn't see the video, but they had the video, but they didn't see Not everybody watched it, even though they had it at the headquarters. They didn't, All know, kind how of to, they didn't know how to handle the problem. That's, well, here, here's exactly. They didn't know how to handle it. Exactly. Well... You remember they hired a private investigator from the FBI to look into it. Mm -hmm. You know who that was? Get ready. Get ready. I'm about to name drop. I didn't know this until I went back because I was thinking about, oh, we're going to redo the podcast. Let me go listen to an old podcast. And it just magically appeared upon this one. The independent FBI agent that they hired for the Ray Rice investigation in the NFL happened to be in cahoots with Roger Goodell and some of his family in the NFL. So he, he was biased. We knew it from the get-go. Hmm. We knew he was biased from the get-go. This was a controversy four or five years ago, whenever, we, whenever the Ray Rice incident was. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, look, they just hired the guy from the FBI, but he's all in cahoots with the NFL. Everybody knows he's got this relation to Roger Goodell. They're, he's he's just uh, he's going to do this, and he's going to let the NFL pass. And, and it happened. It happened. It just like everybody predicted. He was fucking corrupt. Yeah. Guess who that investigator was? You guys ready for this? You guys ready for this? I'm about to drop it. His name was Robert Mueller. Oh, the same guy that's investigating Trump Russian collusion. Oh, Lord. The same guy, the same corrupt guy investigating the Ray Rice incident with the NFL is the same guy investigating Trump-Russia collusion. I'm sure he's plenty uh, crooked as oh. well. Oh, he's not crooked at all. Robert Mueller, you can look it up, Robert Mueller III. Folks, look it up, I'm telling you, 100%. The same guy, he's bought and paid for, bought and paid for. I, when I see, heard that podcast, I was this is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's not four down the road. Same thing is happening. Same bought and paid for guy to go in and and look for the. And it's amazing how he has that power. But that's the that's that's the area we're living in. That's the type of country we're in right now. How people are doing that. But uh, yeah, you can go back and look. Everybody listening to this podcast, Robert Mueller the third. Investi- he was a corrupt person investigating the Ray Rice controversy and now investigating Trump-Russia collusion. Putting it out there. Be- take, uh, do what fair. you will with that. Not too fair. <laughs> not too fair at all. That would, that would be my summation of not, it. Not level playing field, that's for sure. So it, it's Saturday uh, when we're recording this, the day before Father's Day, 2018. Now, we, we've... Covered a lot of stuff. We're we're coming back to podcasting. Um, Kelly has been a, a a guest of this podcast show since the beginning. My dad is. Uh, by the way, Happy Father's Day to my dad. He's going to listen to this. Uh, I told him, you know, I'll post it and I'll let him know. He'll be good the first man, to know by the way. Good it. man, people. Oh, look, I got my dad. He'll bend he, over backwards to help you out. Backwards. He'll cut flips, dude. <laughs> he's and and he's he's such a handyman dude. He's it's incredible. Um 
never graduated high school. I don't think he even made it to high school, but you know, man of the man, of, he's got common sense and he's just got that life experience knowledge. He he can do he's a jack of all trades. I've been obsessed. Uh, anybody who knows me knows I'm a bourbon man. I love to, I'm, look, I'm drinking a bourbon and Coke right now. Evan Williams and Coke. It's Evan Williams, so I'll mix it. Yes, of course. Let me Who's take a got sip. metal uh, insides drinking all this? <laughs> I just, you know, I try to be healthy. I take vitamins and uh, work out and stuff like that. But um, I, I, I've been, there's these things called toasting boxes. Just a wooden box, but you make it all nice and shiny and, and, uh, it can fit your favorite bottle of whiskey, mm-hmm. your favorite um, whiskey glasses, maybe some whiskey stones, and uh, sometimes even cigars. I'm going to make my dad. I, I'm talking to my dad. We're going to make one. So it'll be a wooden box with a latch on it. You open it up, have my bottle of whiskey in there with some whiskey glasses <laughs> and a little side compartment with some fucking cigars in it. That's How manly and, and classy right is that? right up your alley right here. Classy as and look, I have a bar in my house. I have a home bar. It's it's in the kitchen, but my toasting box is going to be here in the studio. I want that right there. <laughs> right, you might there. as well put your little ice box right there. And all my a podcasts. And just... <laughs> hey, look, all my podcasts are going to be um, bourbon infused, <laughs> partially drunk episodes. Well, you know. It's called motivation. It's called motivation. It's, it's called getting out of reality and getting into podcasting. It's you can say what you want when you podcast. It there, is. There's and, no and, and, rules, no no rules, no regulation. It's on the internet. And again, that's why I'm trying to separate myself from my professional career. I'm not going to say anything too controversial and most of the people that listen to our our radio station there are those type of people where they think the same way I do, we just and I'm not going to be offending them at all. Right? You know, we're, we're just keeping it real. I'm from South Louisiana, born and raised, and that's how I think. It's how I grew up. It's how I live my life. Um, this afternoon, despite the uh, weather we have, we're supposed to be doing some barbecuing. Kelly brought some leg quarters and some some uh. Some saucies. Teats sausage. Woo! The best pork We need to get them to sponsor around. this podcast. Teats, you know, uh, I grew up on Teats Meats. Uh, award-winning smoked meat since 1955. Teatsfoodstore.com, by the way. The, we're not getting paid for this ad. Maybe eventually in the future, we will. I'll talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I grew up on that. Not a, a, a award-winning sm- smoked meats like on any other on the planet. You've had smoked sausage... But you've never had smoked sausage like like Teat smoked sausage. None other like it in, on the planet. None. No. Just unbelievable. Um, everything you need for your rice and gravy, they've got it. You need some deodorant. They got it there in their <laughs> store, too. Fresh meat cut the way you want. Uh, Teatsfoodstore.com, by the way. If you live outside the state but you want some, some Cajun-style uh, specialty meats, some Cajun-style smoked meats, pure pork, smoked meat. By the way, if if you're listening to this and like and you're freaking Oklahoma, just don't eat the boudin. Well, everything else is great, but the boudin. The boudin has gotten better. The boudin has gotten better. But if you're if you're in like Seattle, Oklahoma, Michigan, or something, listening to this, and you want some of the best smokes, not not some of the best smoked sausage in the world, TeatsFoodStore.com, get the pure pork. Smoke sausage. Mm-hmm. Buy it and have it shipped. No They'll fat. ship it to your door. No fat. Unbelievable. You can grill it. You can chop it up, fry it in the frying pan, put it in a gravy. Whatever you do with it. Look, you can chop it up, uh, saute it, put it in the lasagna. What? Unbelievable. The Actually, smoky flavor. It's unbelievable. They just came out with a new sausage. I'm looking for it. Right I, I, I heard about it. Look, I think isn't it brisket? Is it like yeah, a brisket that's, that's sausage? Brisket so, yeah. These cats, outrageous, outrageous. In the smoke meat capital of the world, Phil Platt, Louisiana. Look it up. That's where me and Kelly were both born and raised. I live in uh, Lafayette now. Kelly's still just outside of Phil Platt. What you said, Point Blue? 
Yeah, I actually live like just a few miles from uh, Teets, where is the best boot. At, uh, T Boys has the best boot. T Boys in, in Mamu, and just a few miles away from uh, Mamu Teets. is a, a, another place uh, in Louisiana, South Louisiana. They have great, uh, Mamu is where too. everybody knows Mardi Gras comes from. Mamu was named. It means mammoth. Mamou. Mamou is a Cajun French term for mammoth. Mamou. Because there was a claim that somebody seen a mammoth in the area, which was practically impossible, wow. but it was just, you know, folklore. So what you looking up? This new sa- sausage is jalapeno cheese brisket and pork sausage. Oh. <laughs> jalapeno <laughs> cheese brisket pork sausage. Unbelievable. Oh. Dude, I, I'm telling you these guys, and they don't, they don't quit. They don't quit. Um... Wow. I'm looking at it on his phone. He pulled it up. It's we're going to get into that in, in a future cook. podcast. In a fu- in a future podcast, we're going to cook this and we're going to talk about how great it is next time. Um I have a um uh, part of my family is pig stand the original pig stand owners, but pig stand barbecue sauce, pig stand uh, you know, spray for barbe- barbecue marinades and all that. As uh, as well as like the jambalaya mix and all that, they do all that. Pig stand and carries root. Yeah, same family. That's part of my family. I could sm- when I'm traveling to work in the morning. I could smell. You smell carries. Uh, smell the carries root. Rue. Like half of yep. the town smells like root. Ville Platt um, again. Ville Man. Platt uh, folks online. The you best can find home them. cook in in the world. And and you're gonna you're gonna find it there. Uh, my family does the products. We're not getting paid for this. I'm just telling you. Uh, they're part of Cajun. What is it? Cajun Crate. CajunCrate.com. Look it up. You can get pig stand products and uh, Carrie's Rue and all of that shipped right to your door. A whole Cajun basket. No matter where you are wow. in the United States, you can get it shipped to them. And, and uh, my buddy Ross, who well, I say buddy, he's my cousin. My cousin Ross is on Facebook. He does videos for Carrie's Roo, That's showing you all their different wow. products. Yeah, 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 Ross. You've seen his I'm, videos yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. He's he's making a, he's making an impact on social media. I'm very proud of him. He's going, doing videos for Carrie's Roo, showing all their different products. He's cooking, dude. He's cooking on these videos. He's yeah, showing you seen that also. Uh, different techniques. Um, that's my, it's my cousin. Um, it's his parents that own things. They, they letting him do the social media thing and he's, he's taking care of business. I'm very proud of him for, for making an impact there. But again, those of you who are in South Louisiana, you know, all these products, you know what we're talking about <laughs> when we, when we're mentioning them in the prog- podcast and maybe one day we'll get sponsored and this will actually like generate some money. But right now. It's Lan Yop. It's the Lan Yop show. We're doing it for free. Uh, South Louisiana folks, you're listening to this show. You know what Lan Yop means. Those of you from across the world who may be listening to the show don't know what Lan Yop means. Lan Yop means free. A little something extra. A little something on the side. And uh, that's, I think, that's the way I wanted to brand this new era of our podcast. We are, believe it or not, 48 minutes plus into this podcast, which I, I think is going well so far. It's yep. introductory. Yep. Again, uh, glad to have Kelly coming in to kick this thing off with me. He's a very, he's a mainstay and you'll get to know him a lot over our podcasts. Uh, I'll have him in a lot. My wife will probably drop in every now and again. Again, hats off to her. <laughs> she's doing she's doing some amazing some amazing work right now, taking care of the kids. We hear them in the background a little bit. Probably not coming across in the audio. Um, when we get into Saint season, we're going to be doing a lot of Saints talk. I'm trying to think of things that people can expect in this podcast. Uh, we're just going to BS. Well, we'll talk a lot about cooking, South Louisiana style conversation, for sure. Oh, by the way. Matt Guitar Murphy passed away. Uh, any of you folks, big blues musician, blues musician fans, Blues Brothers movies, you remember him from there. I just got to tip my hat to him. Amazing musician, Matt Guitar Murphy. May he rest in peace. Great guy, part of the Blues Brother movies. He he did that scene with Aretha Franklin, think which was absolutely legendary. Just sad to see uh, one of the greats uh, pass away. Uh, 
not for uh, after the whole thing with Anthony Bourdain. A lot of suicides, celebrity suicides, kind of in the talk right now, which is a which is kind of crazy. Uh, I don't want to get too into that. I don't think that's a topic uh, I really want to explore because this is going to be a happy podcast for yep. for to to start it off. Maybe one day we'll talk about depression and all of that. But I will tell you one avenue that that people need to explore is just uh, pharmacology. Sometimes, you know, um, Kelly, you had a brother. One of my, you and him, are like brothers to me, uh, that you lost, that we lost. Um, he had some depression issues, but sometimes uh, I just want to touch on this. We're not going to go too far mm-hmm. into this, but. Sometimes a depression medication can make it worse. Yeah. So it, it, it's very risky. Um, the pharmacology behind it is, is just crazy. You, you can take the medicine that's supposed to help you with your depression. And it just makes you more depressed. Mm-hmm. So maybe one day, another podcast, we'll explore that situation. But it's, uh, it's something that needs to be explored in this country. We have a lot of crazy just suicides and stuff going on. Um, and we have over too many, too many prescriptions. Doctors are just tossing pills, tossing pills. Oh, you, oh, you got something wrong here. Just oh, yeah. have some pills. Oh, yeah. and, and instead of really taking the time to investigate things. Yep. But uh, anyways, how are things going, dude? <laughs> <laughs> That barbecue is going to smell good after a while. Look, I, we got to figure out what we're going to do. Because I want a barbecue. It's supposed to rain, but as of now, it hasn't yet. Or we're supposed to get some. Oven. But, I, but, there's nothing, yeah, but there's nothing like some good charcoal. <laughs> charcoal is amazing. I got a gas grill. By the way, I'm out of gas. Either way, either way we got to go to the store. We either got to buy charcoal or we got to go buy some propane. The hell with the oven. Fuck the oven. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking charcoal. I have covered porking. I got the carport. I think we go to the store, buy a bag of charcoal. If something happens, it starts raining too much. We drop temperature. We can finish it in the oven. Yeah. Uh, but I think we go charcoal first. Start cooking some, some meat. I got some, uh, beef spare ribs. No, 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 no. Beef. Yeah. Yeah. Beef. Short ribs, beef mm-hmm. short ribs. I got some beef pre-sliced brisket, which is crazy. That is cool. pre-sliced, whatever. You brought some leg quarters. Mm-hmm. I got some tea sausage. You got some tea sausage. We're going to be all right. And look, I'm doing the keto diet, by the way, just letting folks know. Just not today. Um, no, 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 today, <laughs> today. Dude, keto diet, is, it's low carbs, period. Lots of meat, meat. lots of fat, low carbs. Well, what we're about to cook up is all freaking meat, dude. There's no carbs in that shit. We're not putting sugary barbecue sauce in it. I'll spray it down with a little bit of the oil, the um, the barbecue spray. No carbs in that shit. The um, pig stand spray, the barbecue spray. Nice. It's good stuff. Keeps it moist on the grill. Gives good flavor. Doesn't let it dry out. <laughs> no carbs. No carbs. We'll do it right. It's going to be fun. I had thought about, and I, I was going to do this. It, mm-hmm. it, it would have been done. Um, for 120 bucks. I would have got a wireless set to where we could have been. We, we started the podcast in here. This was my plan. We were going to start the podcast in here. The weather would have been nice. We would have moved outside after the initial first few minutes of the podcast. And then we would have been barbecuing outside with wireless headsets on, still recording here yeah. in my office. But we would have been outside barbecuing with the wireless That's headsets. That's a man that loves talking, his podcast. Talking and, and just BSing while we're barbecuing. That's money coming out of his own pocket. Yeah. Well, Cause we it's a love of mine. It's a love of mine. Because we don't get paid for this. No, we don't. So I was going to put up, and, and I price it, it's less than 120 bucks, and I'm probably going to pull the trigger on it pretty soon, but I figured with the weather that we're expecting, I don't want to be outside with electronics. Not a good idea. Even though we're covered, not a good idea. Yep. So, not doing it this weekend. 
But in, in future think look, we have the barbecue in August, which is a big event. We'll probably be doing some where we're outside barbecuing, outside, and we'll be broadcasting. You need to change the time of the year that you'll have the barbecue. Because it's, it's always hot as hell for the barbecue. Always. <sighs> and we're talking late August, beginning of school change year. It, change mid, it. mid to late August, third week of August. And, but in South Louisiana, it's 100 I remember we had to and, put three fans outside just to keep some type well, of... Well, last, last year it wasn't that bad heat-wise, but we had a tsunami. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it was a, 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 not a tsunami, but a um, monsoon. Yeah. Unbelievable storm that we had, which really screwed things up. The food still came out great, but, I mean, it really messed things up. We'll see what happens this year. But I'd like to be outside walking around. With some wireless headgear, just talking, interviewing people. Yeah, that's that's the unfortunate thing, Kelly. And Kelly's unfortunately sitting on a stool uh, for this podcast. I'd like to be able to get a um, a chair. And you look, you can pull the wire a little bit through that. You see the yellow thing? You can pull it through a little bit. My pull, butt some, hurts. pull yourself some slack. My butt hurts. Um, it's a little tight, but you can pull yourself some slack. Um, I we need to get a guest chair in here. We need to get a guest chair to make it a little bit more comfortable. It's killing me. <laughs> Already don't have much back saw. And then I got to sit on that. <laughs> no, it's not that uncomfortable, but sitting an hour on it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we need a, We do need a guest chair. We'll get that set up. Look, this is, a, this is the first podcast. This is episode, episode one, and despite how many years we've been doing this. Put a sofa in here so you could that would be, You know, we did, we did at one point have that little, um, what was it? The, it? It was like a little sofa, but it folded into a bed. Yeah. But it wasn't very strong. Like the springs were weak. You would slept on it. Yeah, the yeah. futon. Futon. That was that's not the comfortable name. at all. <laughs> can I, count I to heard that? a lot of complaints from Kelly about that futon. <laughs> you might as well not even go to bed because you're not going to get no <laughs> sleep on it. That board just hits you in the spine all night. <laughs> Shoot. You might as well sleep on the hardwood floor. Well, we got rid of that for free. We just gave it away for free. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for them. <laughs> I know who got the wrong end of the deal. No. <laughs> you might as well not even have one. Oh, man. Oh, that's like sitting on some concrete bricks. <laughs> oh. That's no, it wasn't bad until you try to sleep on it. Until you try to sleep on it. And that's then right. the main board in the middle just gets all in your way. I had to sleep hanging off of it for it to feel <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, that's Gompicon now. And in its space, we have a treadmill. I'd rather sleep on the treadmill. It's uh, <laughs> which is which is back in action now. I can. I haven't done cardio in a long time. I, I got to get starting doing cardio. I'm doing, I'm doing dumbbell workouts. I can't afford a gym membership, and I don't right at the moment have the time to do that. I got to still work out with a. But toddler. he can afford a, a wireless. Uh, microphone system. 120 bucks, dude. 120 bucks is <laughs> that'd pay much. almost a year of gym membership. What really? You talking about? Really? I don't know. I about 30 a month. For I a don't have time to. Oh, that guy adds up quick. That's more than 120. Come on, dude. 30 times 12. Get out of here. That's way too expensive. <laughs> That's way too expensive for me to lift some some light weights and people look at me and snicker at me in the corner. He ain't got I, no hair. <laughs> No matter how much he works out, he look at him. Hair. He's straining, he's sweating, and he's just lifting a fucking twenty-five pound weight. Oh, <laughs> I bet he's gonna be tired when he leaves. Here. <laughs> look at him lifting that thirty pound. He can barely move. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what does he bench? Two. <laughs> <laughs> I know his hair don't bench nothing because <laughs> he ain't got the. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't do the gym thing, but uh, I, I like doing it. In my own house, in the private of my own house. I do dumbbells. And uh, I'm getting there. Not where I want to be, but I'm getting there. I do one sit-up a day when I go to bed at night and then I rise <laughs> in the morning. Hey, it's worked for me all these years. <laughs> I'm a fine specimen, let me tell you. <laughs> you what, 225? 235. Two, 235. I was, I was close. Of sexiness. Yeah, right. <laughs> Kelly's a Kelly's a big dude. 235, you're heavyweight in the UFC. I'm uh I I'm, I'm, I'm the <laughs> phantom 
Oh. <laughs> Whatever the lowest weight class is, yeah, I could barely make Phantom it. Phantom pencil weight. In the UFC, yeah. <laughs> well, my my idea right now is I'm cutting body fat. I'm getting as lean as possible. Then I'm going to pack on. I'm going to lean, lean gain, lean gain. But right now... I gotta get the. I gotta get as low body fat as I can. I gotta be able to see my abs. Gotta be able to see them. I can feel them right now. I need to be able to see them. I can see the the top ones starting to form a little bit. Got to go a little bit more. I'm trying to hide my abs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm peeking. Yep, I'm gonna soon be starting a workout routine too. As soon as I start this you, new job, you gotta get on the. You gotta get on the schedule. I mean, it's just it's not easy. And look, I know people say you gotta make time. Well, yeah, I'm making time, and I'm still struggling. It's hard if your job and then seeing about your kids, yeah, and all your other responsibilities get in your way. But sometimes, well, that's just it. I mean, if you want to be, if you're in that position, and then you want a great body, you've just got to be an asshole. You got to be a shit husband. And a shit father. You got to ignore your family <laughs> to go work out. You got to ignore your family to go work out. Yeah, you might look, but uh, you know, you look at people that are like that. A lot of great physique, or whatever, and they have family and stuff. And you're like, oh, he can juggle. No, he's more than like he's not juggling things. He's more than likely a shit husband and a shit father because instead of spending time with his kids and with he's his working wife, out three, four he's hours working out three or four hours a day. You exactly. Think, you think if I got one or two hours to myself at night, I'm gonna go work out? No. I no, want to be you, able to sit down and watch a TV show or something. And just breathe for a little while. <sighs> just breathe for Have a little nobody while. nagging me or, you know, I've been on my feet all day long. You think I want to be on my feet working out? Mm-hmm. No. But now that I'll be off early, I can get off work, do a workout, take me a shower. I'm good the rest of the day. I have time. That's what it's, it's, what it's about. And kids will be in school, so hey. I have no excuse. School is an amazing thing, right? <laughs> especially when it's free. Right now, it's daycare, so it's getting it's getting paid. But when they start going to public school, kindergarten and stuff, boy, dude, it don't matter what school. Oh, it's line yop after that. Get like your ass show. out of here, <laughs> boy. And you be in the summer and being like, and I'm I'm doing it now. Okay, my my kids aren't in school, but just the neighborhood kids that like to run around all over the neighborhood and they're in our yard and stuff. And I'm like, man, where, where, why are they not in school? Why are they not in school? Oh, it's a holiday week. Fuck that. Get in school. Them kids need to learn. Yeah. Get out of my yard and go learn. Get out of here. Y'all need to go to school. <laughs> Go learn something. Easy. Thirty-two years old, I'm developing in, in to a an old man mentality <laughs> for sure. <laughs> you just want some time to do something. If you want to go fish, go fish. If you cool. want to fish. If, if you want to hit the disc golf course once in a year, hey, you want to go hit the course. I need a fish, man. I uh, we need a fishing trip. Me and you haven't done that in a while. That's Last one. weekend it was you didn't need a fishing license to go. It was a free fishing weekend. You didn't need a fishing license. They were doing that to promote fishing. Since at the end of this month, mm-hmm. uh, you got to change your fishing license. You got to renew it, and uh, we weren't able to do it. And I, I haven't fished for a long time. There's I two, really want to. There's two things we have we've been having to give up since we had kids, and that and that's. Disc golf yeah. and fishing. Yeah. Which we never did a lot of fishing, but it's been even harder. We we disc golfed a lot, man. We disc golfed a lot. Look, I was a golfer, real golfer, and I gave my clubs up at 16. I just had a real bad day. Mm-hmm. Well, 16 years old. Had a real bad day. Just gave up my clubs. I'm never fucking playing this game again. <laughs> but I got into disc golf, and we've That's had way a, a hell of a time. It's way fun golf. It's much more relaxing, much more chill. I mean, golf is just super fucking frustrating. It's hard. It's one of the most difficult, if not most difficult, sports in it's the world. It's going to be fun to throw in a disc around and well, it's swinging easy. a club at a, a s- at little a ball. T tiny ball that you you just move your club a little bit, you fuck up your swing a little bit, and you knock it fucking 50 yards off course. You know, <laughs> it's. Uh, Throwing a a disc is a whole lot easier. It's a whole lot more calming, less stressful. It's fun, but I haven't done it. I did it, what, when Nate was a year, year and a half years old. So we're still looking. At, I haven't played disc golf in at least two years. Cool. At least two years. And since then, I've been working out. So I don't know. I might have more power. I might be able to get more distance. But then again... 
who knows if I can even throw the shit fucking level anymore. <laughs> you know, it's uh it's a fun sport. The city that we that I live in, well, I live in the parish, Lafayette Parish. Uh, a lot of disc golf courses have popped up in the public parks over the last few years. It's really starting to catch popularity. So there's some places we we need to get to. We need to explore and and try out. Yeah. So we'll get to that in the future. Um maybe we'll we'll tell you in future podcasts. <laughs> Kelly has beaten me in almost every time we've played. Uh, almost oh, every time we've, that we've keeping keeping score. He's uh I think my best pretty much order dominated. Was negative 18. I have real See, I'm uh, it raining. Yeah, oh, a it tsunami was a going Yeah, it was a monster. Negative eighteen. <laughs> um, we um, I'm a really good, really bad guy. I'm either I have a really good hole and a really bad hole. I'm like two under par or plus three on every hole. Mm-hmm. Kelly's just consistent. That's his thing. He's just consistent. He'll par most. Every now and again, he gets a birdie. He'll par most. And it's just him being super consistent is what allows him to win. I'm either really good or really bad most of the time. I never really do bad on a hole, especially not at Gerard. If it's at uh, Paul Davis or something, that par five will get me. But I don't let one bad throw, you know, throw me off. Paul Davis, which is uh, 500, 600 feet is what it was. You can't see the hole from where you start off at. Yeah, and then you got trees everywhere. That's that a pretty. One. That's a pretty hard course, but fun. Yeah, I love it. I, I wish I'd see that old guy shooting at Gerard. I would actually challenge him to a game. I would lose, but you know what? If I could shoot eighteen under on there, there's a shot, buddy. There's a shot. A pro. Uh, you never get even better if you don't challenge somebody. That's you got over to. You. Well, you got to. Uh, on that course, hell yeah, let's throw it down. You know, he's uh, he's always. Who knows? He would overthrow the holes. Try to give us tips. And I might and throw stuff. it right away at the hole and and beat him to it. You know. Well, you got you got different philosophies. You need accuracy versus distance. Some people, oh, it's all about the drive. They all try to get this distance. Yeah, but if it's not accurate, if you can't set, not only that in, in accuracy, but but setting yourself up for the next shot. Setting yourself up for the next shot is he huge. might overthrow it uh, fifty yards, and I'm a right bottle hole the first shot. You know? Exactly, <laughs> and he might not even be the greatest putter. Exactly, you know. Any other course, hell no, he'd probably beat my ass. But oh, Gerard, I probably got a fighting chance. Man, I want to. You make me want to get out there, dude. You make every me time wanna... I go over there and bring the kids play. There's nobody playing this golf. A wide open course. Well. Beautiful cut yard, little sandboxes ready for some shoes to be digging into it. <laughs> All right, so you got a, <laughs> you got a, uh, you bought a house, new yard. I know you had a fig tree in the back. What you said happened to that fig tree? Oh, uh, it's it's still it's there. still there. Yeah, it's just they're not growing right they're now. They're not growing anything. I planted a, a garden, a little small uh, potted plant garden, but I got some bell peppers. My banana peppers, the peppers are just starting. My tomatoes are just starting. Got some cucumbers in there. Getting very excited about that. But I now I got the envie. I want to grow some muscadines. And you got to set up a little thing with that. Like uh, set up a little um, uh, two boards going vertical, a horizontal board on top of them. So you make like a little archway. Throw some lattice all along it so it vines. You get the muscadine on, and I don't want to make some homemade muscadine wine. This will probably be two or three years because uh, you got to get the mus- you got to get the muscadines grow. Now I heard that grows like wildfire, but then it takes a while to let them grow, then break it down, and then make wine out of it. Probably be like a, a year or two uh, process. I haven't even started yet, so. Um, but that's what I want to do, dude. I'm, I'm I'm looking into it. I'll let you see my garden in a little while. But it's it's doing good. Uh, you're not doing much gardening in on your property. No, just cutting the grass. Just cutting the grass. That's all I got time right now. But who knows? So you got a fig tree. You got any other type of trees? Uh, satsuma. Oh, 
Oh yeah. They grow some satsumas. Oh, they grow so much. The small oranges. Yeah. They grow so much you can't keep up with it. Y'all eat that? Oh, what? We give a lot away too. Yeah, you got to. It just gets rotten. I mean, they pull full tree fulls of it. It's not ripe right now, but it will be around November, I think. Well, I'm you getting you can pick bags and bags of it. I'm getting bell peppers and banana peppers. I know my dad planted some lemon trees and all that. I I don't have any fruit. I would love to grow watermelon. Well, I got the cucumber plant. I heard watermelon's kind of similar uh, to cucumber, where it just kind of vines and it just goes. Vines in an area, yeah, and you just pick them off the ground. I haven't uh, tried yet. Uh, there's the the wife. We're gonna take a. a Daddy, Daddy. Oh, okay, Nate. You want to come see? We're, we're it's it's Father's Day weekend. It's kind of a Father's Day podcast, and uh, the wife is breaking into the action right now. We need a little help. Uh, Kelly's got his two girls here visiting in with my uh, two boys, and it's just you know it's gonna be that type of show. We could take a little break here and and stop. And uh, you wouldn't have much of a break if you were listening. And it would just jump right to the next segment. Or I could just keep talking and fill time. And I, I might do that. So anyways, I want to thank you for listening uh, to this podcast. I've been doing this, like I said, for a long time. If you have been listening to a previous podcasts, and you're probably a friend or family member. But if you haven't and you're new, uh, welcome aboard. We're from South Louisiana. We're going to have a... A lot of fun talking South Louisiana things. We're going to talk about food and cooking, New Orleans Saints, of course. Uh, again, we're season ticket holders, so we're very opinionated about the New Orleans Saints and the NFL. Boy, can you hear that? Can you hear the kids screaming in the background? <laughs> that is pretty funny. I don't know if it made it to the uh, broadcast or not, but that is pretty good. But uh, kids, kids are kids for sure. I got a three and a half year old, and the other one is one and a half. Believe it or not, they both born in the month of January. I got two kids born in the month of January, which is right after Christmas. So you can imagine what gift giving is like <laughs> in that time of year. But they're close enough in age to where every other year they'll be able to play on the same sports team, which I'm looking forward to. Obviously, I'm a big sports fan. Uh, not incredibly gifted athletically. I think the best sport I w- was soccer for me. Did really good defensively. I did really good defensively in all sports I played because I'm a defensively mind guy. Uh, I like to take things away from people. Don't necessarily like to take the offensive. Uh, it's just how I've grown. But I've, I've grown up. My dad's given me a very defensive mind mentality where I don't worry so much about dominating other people. But if somebody's going to come and try to get something on me, yeah, right. You've got no line of passage here. That's kind of how I take uh, a mindset. So we'll see. I don't know how athletic my kids are going to be, but I'm looking forward to – I want to be a coach. I want to be a coach for my my kids. Uh, Maybe soccer when they're young. Maybe some t-ball. As we're uh, we're gonna have to start to wrap this uh, podcast up, uh, I think the kids are starting to take over. Uh, Luke is coming to the studio. Kelly's taking his his uh, girls to go potty, and I think they want to go outside. And we should probably start barbecuing real soon as well. Nate, come see, come see Nate. You want to talk? On, you want to talk? Yeah, he's coming in. He's want to come in. Hey, Nate. Oh yeah. Okay. Hey, come here. Say hello. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hello. We're doing a little podcast here, wrapping it up Father's Day weekend. It's the Lon Yop Show. As uh, we're going to start to close this out, we'll keep it on a little bit longer so Kelly can say his goodbyes. But uh, hey, Nate, come see. What's your favorite? What's your favorite color? Pink. Pink? Yeah. Oh, he like he likes pink. It's a different color every day. Pink. What's your favorite color? Pink. Pink, yeah. All right, you got a pink shirt on. Nate, what's your favorite number? A hundred. All right, yeah. <laughs> so the kids are taking over. Kelly, come here. We're we're gonna wrap things up. 
We'll just get some final words for you as we wrap up this podcast. As the kids are, it's an invasion of the toddlers, everybody. It's an invasion of the toddlers. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this thing up here. It's been fun. Everybody have a good one. We had a blast. We'll Enjoy do this your again. Father's Day. Yeah, we'll do this again uh, real soon. I don't know what the schedule is going to be, who the guests are going to be, uh, but I'd like to thank Kelly for coming in and, and starting episode one of the Lawn Jump Podcast, Father's Day edition, as the kids are, are taking over the studios. Who that? <laughs> Everybody, have a good one.